it, it's a bit weird to start mm -hmm. here actually with the opening speech. Um, Mansure, thank you so much for inviting me and so happy that you're here. Um, and that you proposed to have this exposition uh, on the ethic here in the ISS. And especially at this special moment that we are celebrating our DS this week, uh, 70 years of ISS. Um, to have this meeting uh, on this topic, on this sad uh, developments is, is special and it's also very much ISS. I would say. Um, you will see the whole program. Uh, it fits ISS very much. We celebrated 70 years. We do a lot of research on teaching with a lot of societal relevance. Our key values are social justice, equity. So the issues at stake are very much part of ISS. We study it, we teach our students. What I found especially now, and I must admit, I, I already had a peek upstairs in the attic. So I worked Wednesday evening and around seven o'clock I stopped and I thought, let me have a look. And I just want to describe what it did to me without revealing too much. Um, so I went up and looked at, well, the preparations for the exposition or what it was. And I immediately had my own interpretation of that and my own cultural meaning system given to what I saw. The moment I became closer and I read about the stories, I read, I did read the stories, then it was such a shock because what is exposed is so different from what meaning is of it. So that was really a shock and the shock was really felt all over my body. Um, so um, being there, walking there, made me very much aware we do a lot in ISS, we speak a lot, we do a lot of things from our heads. Some of us also look at what these issues mean for the body and where you are. And the moment it touches you here and here, that's the reality, that's for real. I think I want to say that as an opening speech. Because not much more, I think, than that. It touched me a lot, and I will never forget it. And thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's an honor to talk today, mm -hmm. to say something about the wonderful board, which is exhibited here at ISS. I'm a bit emotional, as you can imagine, after this beautiful dance, very expressive, and showing the pain and power of what is going on in Iran at the same time. And before talking about the exhibition, I would like to say something about what is going on. What is going on in Iran? The bravery and outrage of Iranian women, which is everywhere, in Iran, everywhere, in the world, everywhere. Well, that is something to say about this, which is very distinctive. And uh, there are four aspects that I want to just mention about how I see this movement com compared to other protests in the world. First one, as Mansouren proudly says, it is a feminist movement. It's a movement by women, by girls, all ages, inspired by waves of feminism in Europe. The parents were feminists. The movement has a foundation. But what they do is much more than this foundation. They cannot accept deep humiliation of this regime. They are humiliated. They are put aside. They are actually forced to be what they don't want to be. And that is something. Fight for being what you want to be. But another interesting thing about the movement is that it's supported by men. Men are creating corridors around women. They are supporting them. They go with them. They, they are hand in hand. 
15. This time, it's not women who are following men, but men who are following women, which is very interesting, you know. Another thing is that there is a huge solidarity around the world. We can think about all the women, and we have seen them around the world cutting their hair. We can say, this is not enough. Of course it's not enough, but this is a sign. It's a sign of solidarity. It's a symbol of solidarity that we can embrace, that we have to embrace as a sign of solidarity. But we have to do more than that. And that is, again, the symbolic aspect of the cutting hair is another distinctive aspect of this movement. It is performative, also mentioned in Iran, through the messages that was exchanged with Mansura. It is a performative feminist movement. What do we mean with performative? It's not, they don't use, in the process, they don't use violent or violent voices, they use poetry, they use art, they use dance, they use actually heads of burning, you know, all symbolic acts of resistance, which is so powerful. And the, uh, the dance you saw based as it was actually connected to this song, which has considered to be Baroito, but considered to be the I saw the most beautiful song because it is soft, but it is extremely impactful. Because it resonates to the daily conversations we have, daily pain, daily sorrows. It's not a big thing, you know, this heroic kind of, um, how do you say, songs that we used to have in, the, in, the, in revolutions. No, it's very grassroots. And that's why it's so powerful. And that's why, when I listened to it, like many of you, I had to cry. I saw it. all of you having tears in your eyes, and I had it too. So it is a kind of protest that goes together with poet, from a poetic genre, performative strength, and also very strong in its simplicity. And that makes it so distinctive. But now we are here for this exhibition that Mansoura have been actually initiated, the, the exhibition from Evan with Law, initiated in 2018 in Humanity House, in The Hague. And it has been traveling around the world. Mansoura has been boxing in and boxing out all these objects and carrying them around the world. Carrying them, and I have seen them on his shoulder, on her shoulder, and protecting it with, it with her heart. The exhibition showcases handicap, uh, handicaps made by women inmates in every prison. The stories and imaginaries connected to these handicaps make them much more than just objects, as Inge mentioned. It is about embodied, shared histories that come through these handicaps. Story that tells about the biography of women who made it, struggles they fought for justice, love, and passion, for activism, the pain they carry, and enormous creativity they have in their path. These stories travel through time and space and are made and traveled by untiring, I have to say, untiring efforts of all these people who have made this tra travel possible. Can you imagine what it means to have a handicap made in Italy and brought to Netherlands? What kind of effort this journey has taken? And how many people have been really doing all of this and taking all the danger to make this happen? When you look at these handicaps, imagine the lives. Imagine the strength and power. And imagine the journey that was carried through all these beautiful people that made it possible. All these hands that came together to bring this object to you here. So this object 
With these objects, we can imagine love, solidarity, and immense creativity that went into making these artifacts, artifacts, and also the travel, the travels that made possible by these people to the thick walls of prison and beyond national borders. That are new prisons, I have to say, the borders of Europe. So I only can say that in this democratic context, when we have the freedom to tell what we think, to do what we want, it is quite important to, to be exposed to this kind of work and to really imagine the stories. Many people ask me, don't you feel powerless at this time when so many things are happening in Iran and you cannot do anything about it? I say, I do feel powerless. I do feel powerless, but also know my power. I know what we can do here. What is our role? What we, in this world, free world, in a way, can mean for women who are fighting in a closed spaces like Iran or in Eddie, to bring their voice in spite of other, lim other limitations. We have the possibility to not only cut our hair and show, show our solidarity, symbolically, but really use our resources, our, our possibilities, whatever we are doing, to be the voice, to be companion in their struggle and to fight with them, join hands, join resources, to be meaningful for what they are doing. Thank you so much. Well, th thank you very much for giving me a chance to um, express my uh, solidarity for what's going on right now in Iran, and also I want to thank Mansoure for all that she's brought to ISS and, and to me personally. We both kind of arrived at the same time at ISS and have gone through many different journeys and um, every time I'm having to learn with Mansoure, uh, not just from the head as we do in ISS with all our teaching, but from the heart and she uh, really has brought this to us now. But I wanted and I'm not going to speak for a long time. Halle, that was beautiful. You've said many things that really, really helped us understand even more what's going on. But I wanted to say that as a, just as a, somebody, a feminist who's been working in solidarity with uh, women and men um, around the world for many years, right now I'm actually filled with hope um, in a rather painful and hurtful way almost of what's happening in Iran and seeing these young women and the men who are supporting them, really giving a sense to other young women in other parts of the world that it's possible to change regimes, that you risk your life, you can go out, not just cutting your hair, but really not knowing if you're going to come back. Um, and doing it with all the world watching, with such solidarity and such courage that um, just now I'm, I'm also, as some of you know, um, also a citizen of, of Italy, and we've just had a right-wing regime come into power. Literally yesterday, Georgia Meloni was asked to um, take leadership of Italy. It's been, for many young people, um, a fearful moment because this is somebody, although she's a young woman herself, um, and has come up from the youth movement, is not coming with feminist values, is not coming with care for um, LGBTQ people, not even for the rights to abortion or just some of the freedoms that we have just taken for granted in Italy. And it, Iran, Iranian women, young women and men are giving Italian young women and men hope. And they're also out on the streets in solidarity, knowing that in Iran people have been able to do this. So they too can face Maloney and can make those changes. This is a wonderful thing that we can see, that it's as you said, Hele, other generations have been doing it in different ways, but this is a, another kind of moment and power for young people. And of course, as a teacher here at ISS, I, I feel that too here with the, the sense of hope as well as the pain and the knowledge that we have a very difficult world to fight and resist against. But here are Iranian 
young women and men making us feel that it's possible. So um, all I can say is this exhibition is a wonderful moment for all of us just in our hearts to feel what's possible and to continue to act in solidarity in all the ways, this small but very beautiful way of doing it, but there are so many people around the world that are um, there for what's happening in Iran. And thank you again, ma'am, today for, as um, Inga says, this is ISS as well. It's, this is what counts. This is these kinds of being together and crying together but also hoping together, I think, is what ISS also stands for. So, again, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, ISS and friends, for helping us gather here today. My sincere thanks to Dr. Inge Hutter, Martin, Martin Bloch, Wendy Harcourt, and my dearest sister, Sandy Cannonly, for supporting us to reconnect as ISS slogan was to this year, to reconnect with the 17th anniversary of ISS and for hosting the Iranian women's movement museum in exile. Once again, once again, Iran is heartbroken as its youth and its young women and men. The brave freedom fighters paint the streets with their blood. Kurejezi, challenging totalitarianism, patriarchy, and theocracy. The citizens of Iran are calling for justice, equality, and freedom and the world should listen to their chants. Women, life, freedom. Such a bravery has been cancelled on their compulsory hijab. Women, life, freedom is a movement to rebuild not only women's dignity, but human dignity in Iran. In this slogan, women represents all of the groups being oppressed in Iran. Life stands for people's demand for dignified life where citizens can have access to their basic civil rights. Freedom. Freedom because Iranians want a democratic society where freedom of expression is a right and nobody will be put in jail for expressing their ideas, gender identity, religion, or political stance. Although these demands may seem natural to you, in the past 40 years under the Islamic Republic, thousands of Iranians have been imprisoned or even executed for demanding such rights. Our exhibition from Evin with Love is a fragment of such oppression portraying women, mothers, and activists who were imprisoned under the suppression of patriarchal, theocratic, and totalitarian state. We are dedicating this year's exhibition to Mahsa Amini, whose life was taken by the morality police violence and hundreds of other beautiful female bodies embroidered in femininity, lost, present, and frozen. The object exhibited in From Ebbing with Love tells the story of their creators, women who dedicated their lives to the struggle for women's rights in Iran. They are the voices of resistance, beauty, and hope. Some of these women are still in prison. Some are out on bail, and some have been forced to self-exile. The project back to 2008, when five of us took the initiative to establish the Museum of Women's Movement in Iran. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps confiscated all our material, documents, and arrested 
and transferred me to Edin prison. I was accused of spreading propaganda against the Islamic Republic. By 2010, while in exile, to continue my commitment to the Iranian women's movement, I decided to resume the project after joining the International Association of Women's Museum Network. It all started when Nasrin Sotudeh, my lawyer and one of the women activists, sent me an applicant she made at Ebi. Although I prepared a very nice frame for it, I could never get myself to hang it on the wall. The wall reminded me of our separation. I just stood there against the wall. It was in 2016 when the second magical gift from Edin arrived. This time, a wooden calligraphy by Nargis Muhammadi. The word peace and war without the letter A in them. The missing A was being carried by a free-flying bird. I pondered for days about the hidden message Nargis was sending me. Was she reminding me of her unfinished journey toward justice, equality, and peace in Iran? These two invaluable gifts moved me to create an exhibition on imprisoned women activities, activist handcraft. When the International Association of Women's Museum asked me for a photo sample to join the, the European Parliament Committee, I immediately find myself in Martin Bullock's office. <laughs> Watching Martin passionately move his camera lens over Nasrin and Nargis handicraft. to take presentable photo for this mission. I never expected to see the project grow to what it has become today. Martin's camera lens pushed the project into the transnational sphere, which was then warmly received by Hala Goreshi in the Department of Social Studies of Fry University under her supervisor. The project has ever since been exhibiting in Germany, Norway, and Austria, and it's thanks to Inge Hutter and again Martin Block and Sandy that we are gathered here today at ISS with another exhibition of From Edin with love. It's the love of exhibiting this project throughout the world that keeps me going, gives me a reason to life and love despite being far away from my home country, from my comrade, and from my son.